In this show, as usual, Total Fishing covers all aspects of the sport and we've got some great tips on carp, course, sea and predator fishing. As for the Duke and myself, well, we're off to the River Seven. Welcome to Total Fishing. There you are, Sir Imp. <laughs> well, you know, I've always dreamt of owning a boat like this, but sadly I don't. In fact, I'm stuck with this thing here. But life does have some compensation, Sir Em, because actually today we're going fishing on one of my favourite places and yours, which is the Lower Seven. And do you know what we're going fishing for? Tarpon. No. We're going fishing, in fact, for perch. Now, the perch potential on the Lower Seven is <laughs> incredibly underexploited. In fact, there are some very, very big perch here. So who knows what we're going to catch? And we may not have a boat like this one here, but we have got a boat and we are going to use it. Not that boat, that boat. Well, we're pretty well geared up, really. We've got all sorts of kit with us. We've got some float fishing gear and a load of worms. We've got a load of artificial lures as well, so we are going to try and catch perch. But um, we're going to head off downriver, and uh, with any luck, we'll catch a perch or two. Full of stern. Should put air on our chest. I'll go delirious. Well, I'll make first fish of the day. Yeah. Just on a little rattling plug. Really nice little lure this. I've got an ultralight jig rod, and I'm hoping that this will be a perch, but you never know here, it could be any one of a number of predatory fish. It's a bit tricky with this downstream wind, isn't it? Yeah, there he is. Look, not what I was after, but. First bite of the day, there he is. Well, you can hear the plug rattling as he shakes his head and that's how this particular lure works. Yeah, yeah, mate. Nicely hooked. Oh, that's that. There he is, little baby pike. And he's away. Now, this particular lure that I've started off on is a very good lure for perch, really. It's called a rattling plug and it's hollow inside. There's a little chamber in there and you hear them rattling away. Now, the way you fish this, it will actually sink. So you can almost fish it like a jig. You cast it out, just let it sink down for a few seconds. Obviously, it depends on what the depth is. It's quite deep here. It's uh, just over 11 feet. And then you fish it back by just raising the rod tip periodically to make it rattle and it shimmies in the water as you bring it back. So give it a few winds, just a little sharp lift on the rod tip and you'll cause it to vibrate very quickly. The fish will sense the rattle and quite often you'll get some really good hits on these lures they're brilliant for perch but as we've just seen the pike like them as well so from one rattle to another one dave kelbrick proving that great minds think alike or should that be fools seldom differ here's a nice simple tip that involves adapting a shallow running lure and turning it into a deeper working lure. The easiest way to do this is to wrap this heavy duty soldering wire around the shanks of the hooks. You can wrap it around one hook, two hooks, depending on how deep you want the lure to run. And it really can catch your fish on occasions. One way of waiting hollow bodied lures is to drill a hole in the top, add some of these small ball bearings and a small plug of dowel into the hole, put some resin over the top to seal it. By doing that, gives you the added advantage of a rattle chamber and the extra weight all in one. Well, that's a bit bigger, Mick, actually. Is it? Yeah, but I think it might be a pike. It, it feels a bit too kind of dull in the fight to be anything else. Yeah, come on, let's have a look. It looked like a flash It'd of It'd be red. nice if it was a big perch. So it was a perch to me. It is a perch. Oh, it is a perch. Yeah. It's not a bad one. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that, Mick. Quite a nice perch, that one. He's well and truly nailed. Got him. Woohoo! Got the right lure on here, our kid. You have, mate. These rattling plugs are very good for perch, actually, and I love perch fishing. I really do love it. There he is. Looks like a pike's had a go at him, actually. I don't know whether you can see it. There's almost like a 
semicircular jaw mark here, like an oval. And, and what that is, it's where a pike has literally clamped onto him, but this one's got away with it. Nice perch, about three quarters of a pound to a pound. Nice fish. Put it right in the edge here, so I see him swim off in this clear water. Oh, there's another one, Mick. <laughs> Good choice of lure there, mate. Yeah. It's a definite case of eyes bigger than his belly. A rattling plug strikes again. There he is. There's definitely something in this rattling plug thing, Mick. <laughs> I've tried about six different lures, and, and I, I just can't live with this rattling lure. Strike one for the champions, eh? You know, I've been through two or three different lures, and I just, I just can't get a bite. One lure at one depth in one colour, sometimes that's what you need on the day. Well, being as the plug with the rattling is working well for Matt, I'm going to sort through some of my good old perch lures from the past and uh, find one with a rattle. That's been very good, but it hasn't got a rattle. That's got a very distinctive rattle, so I'm going to try that one, I think. This one's actually known as a big S, and uh, see if I can do any good with that. Yeah, I've got something on, Mick. Oh, it's come off. Look at that. They yeah. might be perch, actually. Yeah, it might well be. Yeah. Only a small fish. It's a chob. Oh, it's a chob, Matt. I've got a very small fish on as well. That's good. Could do with him being about three pound bigger. Oh, we love this, don't we, mate? <laughs> we love it. Well, I mean, Mick, I've got something that's pulling a bit on this little rod here. Yeah. What lure are you using, Matt? It's still that little rattling plug, yeah. and uh, this thing hit it like it must be a pike. Well, I'm using 12 pound braid here to fish this little lure and a very light rod, so I'm getting a lot of sport out of this fish. Wow, what a fight, Mick. I tell you, it's worth coming out today just for this. It's brilliant. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, yes. It's a good one. Here she comes. Oh, yeah. Are you ready, mate? Yep. Do you want to net it or chin it? It's up to you. I'll chin it if you want. Yeah, that's a beauty. Behave yourself, girl. Gotcha. Oh, look at that one. Oh, that's a nice pike. That's a really nice fish. Fantastic on the little rod as well. That is a lovely that's fish. That's a beautiful yeah, pike. That's a fight as well. Whoo! Come on then, pike. A real good fight. Whew, what a result. Well, we haven't had a big perch, but uh, that was a fair old pike. And on light tackle, that's about as good as fishing gets, that is. Absolutely brilliant. Real steamer of a bite. Fantastic fight that pulled us about a quarter of a mile downstream and uh, <laughs> getting too old for this. Yeah. You don't want to sell that lure, do you, mate? <laughs> yeah, they're about 50 quid today. Oh, I thought they would be. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at the echo sounder now. We're going to try a different method and I'm looking for an area where I've caught perch before where there's some structure on the bottom. We're actually going to do some really nice fishing. We're going to trot floats down the current with worms on the hook and feed some red baggots and hope that we can pick up some of the perch that way. It's a really, really nice way to fish for them. Right, let's put the lures away and get the float rods out. Well, hopefully we'll get some nice perch fishing the red mate. I think Matt's just hit it off today. He's doing really well. If I can't let him catch all the fish, I shall fish really hard now. Could that for a little chub, Matt? In true greedy chub style, it swallowed the maggot, but uh, I'll get it out with the discourager. Well, we're trotting away nicely here. Great way to fish. Nicely hooked in the corner of the mouth. There you are, sir. You won't believe this, Matt. It's got a zander. It's only a little one, and it is. I'm in against the Michael. Oh, it's a bream, Mick. I think that's a roach bream hybrid myself. It's either that or a silver bream, Sir Michael. I've been getting some bits and pieces, roach and small chub, and now I'm into a, something a little bit better, Matt. Yeah, I can see you've got a good bend in your rod there. I'm taking it easy on this light tackle. It's a great thing when you stick float fishing, isn't it? You don't know what's going to come next. I think it's a chub. I yeah, it, it's a chub. It's running for the cover. Still, don't knock it around, it's no. good sport. It's lovely playing fish on this light tackle, isn't it? Let's have a look at it. Yeah, it's a, a nice job. Come on round this way. The tackle's fairly light, typical of what you'd use with a sort of a fairly stepped up match rod. Four pound main line, 
a hook link of about three pound breaking strain with a small size 14 hook. Miss that one. Quite a fine gauge wire. That's it, in you go. And three maggots. And fishing a swim like this, it's bound to attract chub. And there you are, another typically greedy chub. There must be 30 or 40 maggots at the back of this road. And he's taken mine and he's swallowed the lot, so I'll have to get the disgorger on this one. Well, there's the hook out. It's useful to have a disgorger. That hook was about two inches down the back of its throat. And they're not huge chub compared to those you'd catch on the Dorset Stour or the Grey Twos, but really good fun on this light tackle. And you can catch loads of them in the seven if you fish properly. But I'm gonna have to toss that one back. From boat fishing to fishing on the bank, here's a great tip for all anglers, courtesy of Alex Bones. A lot of anglers I see have got vastly underfilled spools and that'll impede your casting. If you load it to the correct distance, which will be in line with the lip of the spool, you'll have effortless casting and it'll also be a lot more accurate. Now the best way I've found is to attach your spool of mono to the real spool, actually have your reel on the rod as if you were fishing. Now winding the spool in the water actually helps the line to bed on the real spool better. Now a case of winding the line on, you'll now see that the line's loaded to the spool lip and your casting will be a lot easier, as simple as that. Three pound. Nice four. Four. <laughs> you alright, mate? I was. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm not sure where we are actually. Yes, day two, and uh, we're going fishing for perch again. I'm not as young as I used to be, mate. Have I got to sleep with you again tonight? Ooh. Well, I think today the conditions are about as good as you can get them. The water temperature is pretty good. If we had a very bright, sunny day, I think a lot of the sport would be confined to dawn and dusk. Well, we see all sorts of vessels coming down the river, but I've never seen anything as crazy as this. Wow, this is weird. more or less my first cast of the day just underneath the town bridge and I'm into a fish on guess what <laughs> I've still got my little rattling plug on and it's still working just as well I suppose I ought to change lures just for interest really but when you're catching fish it's it's difficult to change this one's putting up a reasonable fight I think it must be a pike it is only a baby <laughs> but welcome nonetheless you're off to a good start, mate. Again, yeah, it's this plug, mate. It's just deadly. I should stay with it, Matt. I mean, I'm trying different lures, and I can't seem to find anything that's any better than that. There he is. There's the plug. Looking a little bit more scarred these days. And a baby pike. Well, we're still trying for the perch, and I'm in again. I've just... A little cast underneath these trees. I'm not sure what this is actually. It'd be nice if it is a perch because it feels about two or three pounds, but I've got a feeling it's probably going to be a pike. It suddenly seems to have got much heavier. I think something's grabbed this, Mick. It started off being small and it's turned into a heavier weight now, Mick. Here it is. Oh, yeah, look, 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 look. Well, this is amazing. I've hooked a zander, a small zander, and it's been grabbed by a big pike. It's exactly as I thought, because it started off as a very shallow, sort of weak fight. And then all of a sudden, the rod went over. Oh, he's oh. let go of it now. And there's the fish. Now the pike's let go of it. So he's had a very lucky escape. But that was a big pike, Mick. Yeah. Look, there he is, Mick. He's just underneath him. I better pick him out quick, otherwise he's going to hit this thing again. That's a 20 pounder, mate. Yeah, it's a big pike. Poor thing, he'll probably survive this attack, but you can see what's happened. The pike has clamped across the zander here, here, here. Big fish just grabbed it sideways on. That was an amazing sight. Now I'm gonna unhook this one quickly because they're pretty tough, these fish. They've got tough skin and I think this one will survive. He's gonna carry the scars of battle for a little while. And that's the reality of life on the river when you're a predator. It's uh, eat or be eaten, I'm afraid. Anyway. Let's put this one back. 
Well, that was quite fascinating, really. And uh, as a pike fisherman, I'm out all the time after pike. Uh, even I don't see that very often, maybe three or four times in a whole season. And it just goes to show, really, that the big pike is the top of the underwater food chain. And anything that swims down there that fits in its mouth, it's on its menu. Talk about the one that got away. We'll remember that monster pike for a long time to come. But let's change the flavour now. It's time for a tip on carp fishing. Here's Pete Castle. For this tip, I'm just going to show you a quick shock leader knot. Shock leaders are really, really good for putting on the end of your line if you're going to be casting a long way, putting the rod under a lot of pressure. They're also really good as well for fishing up against things like lily pads and snags and stuff like that. If you've got that abrasion resistance line at the end of the line, then it will stop it from breaking away. So always what I've done is an overhand knot four times through on both sides and then moisten the line before I pull it together. You see it coming in tight there. Now before I pull it really, really tight, just grab hold of all four tag ends and pull it in. And there you have it, a really strong knot for your shock leaders. Hey Matt. Yeah. It worked. We decided, then as that big pike grabbed a fairly large zander, just see if it would take a big plug. And I've got something I've got to take after about three casts. It might be the same fish, it might not be, but it feels quite a substantial fish, this, Matt. It's kicking up the same amount of yeah. bubbles and things. I'm sure it's the same It'd fish. It'd be great if it was the same one. I wanted yeah, to get a closer look. Here, yeah, he comes up on the surface. It's not the same no, one, No, it's though. not. <laughs> but it's a nice fish all the same. <laughs> it's not the same one at all. It is not a bad fish for him, but not the one. No. One thing I think we should say here, Mick, is people probably see us chinning pike out a lot. And it's not something that you should do unless you've got A, experience, and B, a lot of confidence, because... If you're not sure what you're doing and the hooks are hanging outside the mouth in an awkward position, you could end up with a hook in your hand. So, you know, if you've got any doubts, you're inexperienced, use the net. Anyway, it's not the pike that we saw, but it's a nice fish. Well done to Michael. Good. From one old dog to another one, you've met Big Brown. Meet Neil Bryant, our sea fishing expert. I want to demonstrate to you my one up, one down rig. And it's a very simple rig. The top end of it, I've just got a small barrel swivel, 50 pound. Running down from there, I've put a one-up snood with a size two hook. From there down, another 18, 20 inches to a link swivel to attach the lead to. And behind that is a stop knot bead to prevent the barrel running over the top of a little swivel. From the little swivel down, small piece of fluorocarbon line, attached to that a couple of beads and a size two hook. On this particular snood, I'm going to attach a ragworm. I'm going to look for a pollock or a little pouting or the odd wrasse that may be above the rocks. Following on from there, I then attach the lead, and then from the lead, I come down to my bottom hook. I'm just going to put a bit of mackerel on, see if there's any dogfish down there. They really do like a bit of mackerel. Very simple, one up, one down rig. It does work, and I'm sure you'll enjoy catching many fish with it. Ah, oh, now what's that? I've just took something else here, Mick. It feels perch size. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got one? Well, I don't know whether it's a small pike. It might be a small pike, but it could be a perch. It's wriggling about a little bit. Uh, it's a little zander. Really small one. There's a lot of small fish in the river, isn't there? There is, yeah. Everything likes this rattling plug. Well, that's a, a nice illustration of the Xander's mouth there, look. It's a little bit like Dracula. You've got fangs here, here, here and here. It's like a vampire fish. Ooh, something hit that hard, Matt. <laughs> I think it's a pike. I've just put on a little shad wrap, which hasn't been on all day, and uh, about second cast with it, I've had a whacking hit on it and uh, something running all around the river. Look at that go, Matt. It's, it's not a big fish, I, I think I can see what's happened. I think I'm getting overexcited, and uh, I think I've hooked it under the chin, and that always makes them fight harder. I like to unhook them in the water if I can. It's less dangerous for me, and less stressful for the pike. Go on, off you go. I've got one on here, Mick. Well, there you are, that's an immature bronze bream. Oh, here you are, mate. Walking around like a pike, actually, this is, mate. There he is, Sir Michael. 
Well, this is quite interesting. We've actually caught, at the same time, a pike and a zander. And the pike, of course, has been in the River Severn since time began. The zander have only been here for about 25 years. So this is the new predator and this is the old one. And they seem to live quite happily together, don't they, Matt? Mm -hmm. Actually, right, I hit a right. They're quite rare in the River Seven, aren't they, Matt? Yeah, well. very. Oh, well, I thought that was a big perch then for a minute. He's only a little fella, so I guess we'll forgive him. I've hooked what feels like a really nice fish here. It's just dragged a load of line off me and then shot down river. I've got to try and keep it out of the cover, actually. It's a big pike, this one. Right up near the surface now. He's really, really angry, this one. He's just having a midday snooze. Hey. Come on, baby. Whoa. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. That's a great thing about autumn pike. They're really acrobatic. They're absolutely at their fighting best. He looks pretty mean, mate. I don't know whether you fancy taking him Go yet, on, I'll, but... I'll have a go. He's a real performer, this one, Michael. I don't think yeah. he's finished yet. <sighs> well done, son. I can't use me right hand. Isn't that a beautiful <laughs> so... looking pike, Nick? Look at the spots on that. That is magnificent, yeah. actually. It's like a leopard, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful fish. There you are, Sir Michael. A fine pike. Beautiful fish. Fabulous colours. Look at his tail. Fabulous colours. Really pleased with that, mate. Well, that was a really acrobatic pike, wasn't it? Giving it all in the fight, so we'll just give it a couple of seconds in the water to recover her strength, get the old gills working. Back to the depths. <laughs> Good work there, Sir Michael. Well done, mate. Hey, look at this, Mick. Just on the last knock-ins. Yeah, yeah. I've caught quite a nice perch on. I thought we'd get one just as the light was coming through. Fighting really well, actually. Yeah. Just as the light's going. That's typical, isn't it? Yeah. There he is, a nice old stripey in the end. And uh, we've had an absolutely fantastic time. Autumn is a wonderful time to be on the River Severn. And uh, we've had a fantastic couple of days, I'll tell you. It's taken us a long time to catch a nice perch, but we've got one in the end. And uh, I hope you enjoyed all the hints and tips in the programme to improve your fishing skills. There'll be more of that next time. But until then, from the Duke and myself on the River Severn, see ya. <laughs>